Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Asebi, and today we're going to talk about the shopping cart trick. This is very useful if you either have no credit or if you've had defaults or bankruptcies in the past just as a way to get credit. But first, if you are new here, we're all about how to maximize the value of your credit cards, so how to get the most cash back and also how to travel for free. If that sounds interesting, then subscribe to our channel, but let's get started. Before diving into the trick itself, let's dive into who this is useful for. This trick is really useful if you're someone who's had a default in the past or a bankruptcy. This trick is also useful if your credit score is relatively low and you did something where you can't really improve it. So for example, let's say you had a lot of late payments and you decided to pay it off and close the account. There's nothing you can really do to increase the score since you don't have any more payments and you're kind of stuck in a bad spot and you can't really apply for any of the good cards because your credit score is too low. This tactic could be pretty awesome. The third group would be students. So if you are someone who maybe has one card and it's not that great and you want to add another card and you kind of want to build out a base of cards, this is pretty useful. It might also be useful if you are someone who has no credit score at all, but it really depends in this case. The final use case would be someone who has a lot of credit inquiries and you don't really want to get any more. So for example, let's say you have 15 cards in the last 24 months and you really don't want to apply for any other cards that add to those inquiries. You can apply for one of these cards and still probably get the bonus if it's useful for you. There are a few caveats I want to mention. So if they ask you to enter your whole social and not just the last four digits, then it's likely going to be a hard inquiry. If they only ask you for four digits, then it's likely going to be a soft inquiry. So that's pretty beneficial. With anything I mention here, your mileage might vary, so it might work for some people, but not for others. The final caveat, and this is kind of a personal one, is that if you do go down this method, and let's say you've had defaults in the past, make sure that you actually pay this off. So I know some people who are like, hey, I can use this to get more credit, but if you're going to just get more debt, it's not really helpful. Personally, I'm really not a fan of debt, and I pretty much use my credit cards like my debit cards. I really hate the idea of people getting a ton of debt for no reason. With that, let's dive into the trick. What we're basically doing here is going through a shopping process, so putting items into the cart and then going to the checkout screen and hoping that something pops up. You don't need to buy any of these things, so it's going to be before you check out. This only works for certain stores though, and most of the cards are by commodity. So again, if you do want a thorough list, I'd recommend going to our blog post down below. It should be the first link in the description. A few examples would be Express, GameStop, Overstock, and Williams Sonoma. There's a few Synchrony and Wells Fargo cards that work as well, so specifically Walmart and Kirkland's. When you go through this process, make sure your ad block is turned off just because some of these ads might not pop up. You also want to make sure that you enter your actual address just because when you do the soft inquiry, if they can't match the last four digits of your social to that address, it's not going to go through. And again, you might have to do the checkout process multiple times before it shows up. You do not have to buy things every single time. Go shopping, add things to your cart, go to the checkout screen, just don't click on the actual checkout. The credit limits for these cards tend to be a bit lower, so that's something to consider. But again, for most people, it's not really going to play an issue. Your main goal here is to rebuild your credit. There are some people who are going to use this to get sign-up bonuses, but for me, it doesn't really make that much sense. Most of the bonuses you get here are relatively small compared to the ones that you can get from Chase or American Express. If you're going through with this process, make sure to pick cards from places where you actually shop, just because it doesn't make sense, again, to get either a bonus or to either have a card at a place that you don't shop. Most, if not all of them, don't really have annual fees. So again, you can add them to your base and it's going to age with your credit. This is super useful whether you're a college student or whether you're someone who's gone through a bankruptcy, you really want a strong base. I see a lot of people who end up applying for future cards and who end up canceling their earlier cards because they don't need them. So they're like, hey, I have the Chase Sapphire Reserve now, let me cancel my Chase Freedom. And now you only have three cards instead of four cards. It's actually not that good just because you're kind of losing value in terms of what you're doing. And yes, it might be slightly harder to manage, but for most people, again, it probably takes 30 seconds or one minute and you can automate a lot of this. Most credit cards have auto pay now. And again, even if they don't, you can probably do this in 30 seconds or one minute while watching YouTube. Again, feel free to watch your channel and do banking stuff at the same time. For me personally, these tricks really don't work out that well, just because again, the places I shop at the most are probably Costco and Amazon. And I still don't have either of those cards just because there are better ways for me to get a higher return on spend. And again, I'm not saying the Costco card or the Amazon card is necessarily bad. It's just that I can get more value from other cards. If I did have to pick one of these cards, I'd probably go with the William Sonoma one. You get free standard shipping with the card, which I think you get anyways if you spend over a certain amount. You also get 5x points back at William Sonoma, and you also get a $25 gift certificate, and that's probably going to be the most valuable thing to me. Technically, you can get this card, not pay an annual fee, and basically get paid $25 per year just by having it. And again, a lot of these cards do have side benefits, so you would want to look at that as well. 
For some of the clothing ones, they might have free alterations or free discounts. And again, I really want to emphasize that these cards are not necessarily bad. Obviously, they help your credit score, and there are a lot of good use cases. For the William Sonoma one specifically, you'll get a 20% discount today on the day that you apply and get approved for the card. If I had a restaurant and let's say I needed to buy $10,000, let us say I had to buy $100,000 of stuff of this type of equipment and I had to deck out my place, then this is not a bad move because 20% of $100,000 is $20,000. You would obviously want to read the terms to make sure that there isn't any cap and I haven't researched this card that much, but again, there are very specific use cases, but for me, I don't really fall into this situation. At most, I could probably see myself buying $1,000 of stuff. $200 is not bad at all, but again, it really just depends. So I hope that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is have you used this trick before? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And if you know anyone else who benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share this video with them because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.